because many of you are going to be modeling in SolidWorks, it will be useful to learn how to actually import a model that is actually starts out as a SolidWorks model. So click open a file and locate the SolidWorks file that you would like to actually use. Once you get to your folder, you will have to change the file types to an actual SolidWorks and you'll see them appear. I'm going to click on the CNC lathe part 2 here and now it'll ask you what kind of machining are you going to be doing. You can do this for milling and in this case for us we're going to do a turn mill so we can actually use a CNC lathe. Click OK and it opens up a window. The import results window will allow you to establish the initial setup location and that we're going to use the wizard to do that. So we're going to say next and here we're going to pick the Z setup direction. I'm going to use a horizontal plane, click on that, and I'm going to rotate my part just slightly so I can select this surface. And now it's going to be perpendicular to that horizontal plane. Click on next, and since my part is round, I really don't care what my X direction is, so I'm just going to say next. We are going to be using round stock, so I'll let that stay the same. And now I need to pick the center point of the round stock. I'm going to click on center of a revolved surface and just pick the inside surface. And we can say next. Now we have the stock dimensions. And for the stock dimensions, our stock is actually 5 inches long and it's 2 inches in diameter. It also has a uh, 0.75 hole that's going to be drilled through it manually. So we will set those up and click next. And when I do that, you can see that the stock is actually it has an image and you can even see the hole that is in there. For the location of the setup, we're going to make the uh, setup location be the end of the part, so I'm going to click the hand that's pointing at the end of the part and say next. And for the hole recognition, we're going to use feature cam later to recognize it, so we can say finish now. Notice it orientates it in the proper loca uh, direction for a lathe. And now you're on the turn import and this wizard helps you recognize the features. So we'll click on next and it asks you right now do you want to recognize the hole features. Actually since you're manually drilling the hole you don't need to do that so we can say no and click on next. Now it says do you want to recognize features from the solid now. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to say no here and click on next. We don't want the features we actually want the geometry so now we can create the turn geometry. Do you want to create the uh, geometry from the profile of revolved surfaces? In this case, yes we do. We tend to have better success using polygonal method. So I'm going to click on that and say finish. Now it doesn't look like anything happened. So what I'm going to do is go up here and go and hide everything. And then I'm going to show all geometry and it now has this geometry that's been created from that solid. At this point we can now create curves. I'm going to need two different curves and I'm going to chain them together. I'm going to start on this radius right up here and I'm going to end at the point here and that is going to be my first curve and then I'm going to start on the flat on the end and I'm going to come over here and that'll be my second curve. Now that I've done that, I can actually start creating features. We're going to do a turning feature. The first one will be a bore because we'll do the inside first. And we don't want curve number two because you can see it turned red and that's the outside. So we're actually going to use curve one here and say next. And you can start to see what it's going to look like. Curve from the, we're not going to offset our curve and we are going to bore it. We can do roughing and finish, uh, uh, finish pass here so this is exactly what we want. And we're going to take a look at these actual tools. So the first tool here, we're going to search for a new one and click on uh, next and I just want to double click on that and I want to make sure all the details are correct. So they should have a 15 thousandths diameter or radius tip which is correct should be an 80 degree diamond that's correct and it has a minimum diameter 
of 625. And that's very important, that 625, if it's uh, the wrong boring bar, could end up saying one inch or one and a half inches here, and that is not the right size. Our through, through hole is only 0.75, so it has to have a minimum diameter that would be smaller than that. So this is the proper tool, so I'm going to say OK to that one, and we'll click on Next. And we will just say Finish from here. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to click on Finish and I'm going to change this tool to a triangular one. And when I double click on that, it'll again have the 15 thousandths tip radius and it'll say again the .625. If there isn't one there, you can always create a new one for yourself. Double click on it. You can make the changes that you want and I'm just going to change the name here to say triangle and I will say OK and it will say do you want to rename the tool or create a new tool if you create a new tool it will leave the one that you started with alone so it will still be in the library and then you can have that new tool so I will say OK and do that and now you can see both of the triangular ones are there in this case I'm going to keep the one that says triangle and I'll apply that one. And we'll say OK. I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. First we'll do it in a solid representation and you can see how it's going through and that looks really good and there's their finishing pass. I like what that looks like. We're going to go back to a top view here and we will look at the center line of the tool pass and you can actually see the tool and how it would be very close to our stock but it does not hit which is exactly what we need. Next we need another feature again it'll be turning in this case it is actually going to be a turn instead of a bore and we are going to use curve tool two excuse me no offset we will rough and finish that and it looks like it's selected the appropriate tool for us so we can just say finish and OK and we'll push play again. Again there's our boring bar and now we're machining the outside. I like that, that looks pretty good. Let's do an isometric view of this. Whoops. We'll do the solid this time. I can rotate that around and I can see it looks exactly what I'm looking for.